Hello and welcome to Your Vote, Your Voice. I'm your host today, Kathy Hayes, and I am so happy that you've decided to tune in for news you can use at CAN TV. Our guest today is Judge Dominique C. Ross. She is running for the appellate court, and we are going to have a conversation with her as to why that's important to you and what you're going to do to exercise your voice. Thank you for coming and communicating with us today. Oh, thank you, Kathy. It's a pleasure to be here. You are making a very historic movement of trying to achieve the appellate court through elections. Could you tell us a little bit about the election that's coming up soon? Well, this year is historic in that Cook County has never had an election in June uh, because of forces that we did not have control over, uh, COVID, uh, the requirement that after a census that uh, lines are redrawn in an effort to get all of those things done in a timely fashion and in compliance with the laws, then the primary was moved from March when we're used to having it until June and early voting begins June 13th. We actually have some super sites that are open now, but all across the county, it begins on June 13th, and the election day, election day is June 28th. Absolutely. Can you please uh, express to our viewers why the appellate court is so important? The appellate court is so important because it is almost like you're getting a second chance and you're getting a second set of eyes to review what the circuit court ruled upon. As a circuit court judge, that judge hears the case from the time that it, there's a complaint that is filed or that our charges are filed uh, on a criminal case and that judge makes the decision either in a bench trial or if there is a jury. If at the end of that trial, the disposition is such that one of the parties believes that there was a mistake or something should have been allowed in that was not allowed in, then they have the right to file an appeal. So the Illinois Appellate Court is actually our appeals court. Mm -hmm. So you file the appeal and it goes to the Illinois Appellate Court where you actually have three sets of eyes to now review the entire record of the circuit court. And two of the judges on the panel that sit in three have to decide whether or not there was an error and that the case should go back to the circuit court for further hearing or further or another trial, or they will outright reverse and say, no, this was incorrect, or you should have done it a particular way, mm -hmm. and then that's the decision right then and there. So there can be an outright reversal, there can be a remand to go back to the circuit court, or the court will affirm the circuit court and then the judgment will remain. There's also another level, but what's important about the appellate court is that the appellate court must hear the appeal from the circuit court. There's a third level, which is the Illinois Supreme Court, and the Illinois Supreme Court has the jurisdiction to decide to hear it or not to hear it. It's their discretion. That is amazing. So people do have a chance to still see if the process, if their rights were still upheld through, a, through another pair of eyes, which is important. I know that uh, becoming a judge is a very difficult process. Yes. You go through a lot of uh, training, a lot of hard work, a lot of sleepless nights yes. probably. Yes. Um, but could you tell us a little bit about your background? I know you are from the Chicago area, that um, you've gone to school in this area, you've been around the court system for a long time, you've been, a, you've been in law for quite a time. Could you give us a little bit about your background? Yes, I am from Chicago born and raised South Side, and I was raised in the Eighth Ward. And so, uh, in, in fact, my mom still lives there. All right. So, uh, a little bit about me. I went to St. Felicitas Grammar School. Go Falcons. <laughs> Even though they, it's no longer there, but, you know, I had a, 
a, a good childhood there. Uh, I went to Elizabeth Seton High School. And when I graduated, I went to the University of Illinois at Urbana, where I majored in communications. Amazing. So after uh, graduation, I decided that I was going to apply for law school. It was always in the back of my mind mm. that I was going to become an attorney. Mm -hmm. But I did apply and I went to Loyola. And go Ramblers. Go Ramblers, <laughs> yes, right. yes. And I must say, you know, law school had, uh, it, it's a tough road. However, Loyola made that road a little bit smoother. So I really must say that that was an excellent education, but it was also an excellent environment. Oh, wonderful. Yes. So uh, after graduating from Loyola, I went into private practice where I handled a myriad of cases. Uh, initially, I handled criminal cases mm -hmm. as well as civil cases, but as I moved along in my career, I moved more toward the civil aspect and did mostly family law contracts, uh, some employment discrimination and landlord tenant types of issues. Very personal things for folks that are living on a day-to-day -day basis. So you were probably uh, the voice that they came to to get great advice. Absolutely, and I was happy to help. That was one of the things that I wanted to do was to be able to help. Uh, I can recall someone asking me uh, once before when I was running for the circuit court if I wanted to be an attorney because I was bullied as a child. And I said, well, no, it wasn't wow. me that was bullied as a child. I was actually that person who stepped in when somebody was bullied. Yeah. And I really would root for the person who didn't have a voice and somebody who needed somebody to stand up for them. And that was my calling. And that's what I found myself doing as an attorney. And I would see people and they would explain to me what was going on, but they weren't able to articulate mm. what they really needed. And sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And right. so you don't know what you need. And I was happy to be able to help. Well, that seems to be the uh, heart the heart of public service, to be able to be a voice for the voiceless yes. and, and, and to be a warrior that way. But who were some of your mentors? Because I know that law school can be tough. I know that being on your own as a practitioner is tough. And then to run for the uh, uh, circuit court and now to the appellate court is also a challenge. So who are some of your mentors that have helped you along the way? Well, you know, I have to start at home. And that would be my mother and my father. Oh, yeah. My parents always told me that I could do whatever I set my mind to do. And I believed them and I did it. And it wasn't just a matter of them saying it, but it was giving me the support and the tools in order to achieve the goals that I had set for myself. From a professional standpoint, and this will sound uh, like, well, she's not an attorney, but the person who actually made me feel most comfortable that I could go to law school and that I could achieve that goal was one of my doctors. Oh, wow. And I always wanted to be able to go back and tell her that. I think I told her back then, but she told me about how she initially was a teacher, mm. but she decided that she wanted to become an obstetrician. And she was married and had two or three children, but she did it anyway. And I listened to her story. And I was married and had three children. Well, at the time, I only had two children. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, if she could do it, and she was such an inspiration to me, that I could also do it. And so I did, and I thank her for telling me her story because it let me know that it was something that was attainable for me. 
Absolutely. You find mentors in many different places and cheerleaders in many different places. It's a great thing that your parents were so wonderful to teach you so many things and you were able to find mentors to help you along the way. Yes. I'm sure you have been an inspiration to a lot of students because my understanding is you do a lot of speaking, public speaking, whether it's to lawyers or schools. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, in particular, I was involved in a program through the Illinois Judges Association as well as the Illinois Judicial Council. As a judge, I would go into the classrooms and teach children that there are certain choices that you need to make because making bad choices can affect your life for many years to come. I mean, there are some types of, uh, there's expungements, there's different programs you can go into, but that's after you've already gotten into trouble. Yeah. So also with the Illinois Judicial Council, which is the council of predominantly African-American judges for which I was the president of, right. uh, we have a program, Robes in the Classrooms. And basically you're letting children, basically children of color, African American and brown children, know that they can be much more than what perhaps their small environment uh, is telling them. And mm -hmm. you can't be what you can't see. And so we are there to let them know that there is more. And it doesn't have to be necessarily a life in uh, the law profession. Right. It can be anything that you set your mind to. A teacher, a doctor, whatever. Uh, but right. I have often heard um, and I've often said you can't be what you can't see and, and to give a child the gift of a dream yes. is a great gift indeed. Um, I know that the campaign trail is very rugged yes. on family, friends, and everyone else, but you've been very uh, thought of high, highly by bar associations, endorsements, and so forth about how your work has shown and proven to be so um, steadworth. So can you tell us a little bit about the endorsement process oh, and, yes. and some of the endorsements you received from the teachers and yes. the Democratic Party? Absolutely. Well, I am the endorsed candidate by the Cook County Democratic Party, and I'm very proud of that because what makes that such an important process is that the Cook County Democratic Party actually takes the time to review your qualifications mm -hmm. and look to see what your experience has been. And you are vetted and your experience and your qualifications make them say, hey, are you gonna be the one that we're gonna choose? And there are many people who go up for that process. And I am proud and honored to say that they chose me to be the candidate, that they slated for the vacancy of Shelvin Louise Marie Hall, who retired perhaps about a year ago. Mm. Uh, and she was an African-American uh, appellate court justice. And I have her full support. I'm proud to say that as well. Yes. And I have big shoes to fill, and I am prepared to do so. I, I do remember uh, Judge Hall very much so. Yes. From 13th in Michigan yes. many years ago. Yes. But I won't go wait. You're probably much younger than me, so I won't go, <laughs> go that far back on you. But It's, it's a condo now. No. <laughs> it's a condo now, y'all. Right, Don't yes. look it up. Right, right. <laughs> but it, uh, she was an amazing ju judge, and as well as an amazing justice. So with all of those accolades. You've had support from community organizations. You've had awards from community organizations. One of my organizations actually gave you an award. You are um, the, t the top ladies of distinction. You've been asked to speak to uh, merit of groups of people, a very diverse group of people. But you've done a lot of conversation on um, addressing issues of bias. That is true. One of the more recent uh, panels that I sat on was implicit bias, and it addressed some of the biases that people have, and you don't even really know that you have them. Mm -hmm. And it can be associated with women or minorities, and 
there are classes that we actually take uh, that are required by the, the court system to see and to, it's a checks and balances because mm -hmm. you sit in, in judgment, so to speak. I always tell people, I'm not judging you, I am judging the situation yeah. and I am looking at the facts. And what we don't want to have happen is biases that we might have against a particular group or a particular way of thought. Mm. And that has no part in the judiciary. That's why it's really important that we have a diverse uh, group of judges. If we have a homogeneous judiciary, mm -hmm. then the thought process will be the same in theory. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if you have a diverse group of judges, then, you know, you have minorities, you have LGBTQ, you have people with different socioeconomic backgrounds and upbringings and environments. And judges do not make decisions in a vacuum. We do not yeah. live in a vacuum. And we discuss things with our colleagues. And so we can appreciate hearing the perspective from someone else. And you may not even be talking about a particular case. You are just talking about life in general mm -hmm. because judges bring to the bench not only their knowledge of the law, mm -hmm. but their experiences as well. In life. We're yeah. gonna take a quick break and we will be back so that we can talk some more about you and your experiences and all the wonderful creative things that you bring with you and talents with you. To, to this challenge. All right. We'll thanks. be right back. I'm Dominique C. Ross. As a judge since 2008, I've helped families navigate one of life's biggest challenges, domestic relations court. It requires legal knowledge, sensitivity, and common sense. And I firmly believe that every person should be treated with dignity and respect. I'm now running to bring the diversity of my judicial and life experience to the Illinois Appellate Court. I'd be honored to have your vote. I am so glad you ladies are here. You each have your own rooms. Thank you. Get settled in. I'll call you for dinner. Adopting teen sisters, it's a lot. Girls, you're gonna be late. You want breakfast? No thanks, we're good. They're always in their own world. You get there? Twice the work. Twice the surprises. Just try it. <laughs> but if you think of it that way, they're also twice as fulfilling. I think you should ask her yourself. Is it okay to call you mom? Of course you can. Hi, and welcome back. Thank you so much for continuing to be a part of our conversation with Judge Ross. I would love for you to tell me more about how you were able to bring all of your talents and, and all of your insight uh, forth, especially with your community leadership, your community involvement, and some of the people that you have been able to admire um, as they tackle on some issues. Well, as a new judge, I was elected to the circuit court in 2008. You are assigned a judge through the uh, circuit court. Uh, Chief Judge Evans pairs up a new judge with a more seasoned judge. And I had the honor and privilege of having Justice P. Scott Neville, uh -huh. who was then assigned to the appellate court. And he was my mentor. Oh, great. And so I have had the opportunity to see him go from, uh, to go through his election as an appellate court justice and then to be the second African American uh, justice on the Illinois Supreme Court. And he has offered sage advice as a new judge that I have continued to take with me throughout my tenure as a judge on the circuit court. 
I was also able to be under the guidance as a trial judge of the late Edward Jordan, Judge mm -hmm. Edward Jordan, mm -hmm. who was very helpful in shaping the first several years of uh, my judgeship. And I'm currently a trial judge under, uh, on a team with Judge uh, William Stewart Boyd. Okay. So I believe that I have had various uh, mentors. Uh, Justice Hall, I was able to speak with her, uh, and she laid a foundation as well. Uh, the retired judge, Laquita Hardy Campbell, was mm -hmm. one of the, she was actually the first judge who I did a full custody hearing in front of. Oh, wow. And I, I just really appreciate her when she was on the bench and now that she has been retired. So there are so many people who have paved the way and who I get to look to and have done so much within the judiciary as well as the community that they are great mentors and role models. And no matter how long uh, you're on the bench, or you, it, they call it the practice of law. That means that you're always learning, you're yes. always practicing, things are always changing, so you have to be on top of that. And it's just great to have people in your midst who are able to collaborate with and uh, show you the way. The judges, the judges that you have mentioned are absolute stellar stars in the legal profession um, and have been for so many years. The whole commu our community, our whole culture community has looked up to them and, and relied on them uh, and their balance. So I'm sure yeah. they're extremely proud of your progress that you've done. But you know, my mom used to say all the time, surround yourself with a good team. And you seem to have done that. Um, and a good team that you even have gone internationally with. Oh, yes. Uh, I have had the opportunity to head up a judicial delegation. And uh, what we did, this was several years ago, there was a group it, it didn't start out this way, but it ended up being all female judges wow. who went on a delegation to the country of Turkey. And the purpose of doing that was so that we could share ideas about the judiciary. They could learn about our judiciary. We learned about their judiciary and their culture. And surprisingly enough, uh, the structure of the judiciary there was quite similar to the structure here. Mm -hmm. Now, since we went there, they have had a lot of changes in their government, and uh, I don't know that their judiciary has changed, but the, the government. So I don't know that anybody has gone back in recent times, but it was a wonderful trip. It was a wonderful experience, and it was, a joy to be able to speak with other judges mm -hmm. who have to deal with the same types of issues that we have to deal with and see how they handle it from a cultural aspect as well as a legal aspect. Yes, the world, it does make you know that the world is smaller than we think. Absolutely. And we are all really kind of intertwined in our issues whether it is for the good or for the negative. But it is good to know that other people are out there fighting the struggle to help people without a voice. Yes. M many of the things that you've done is also scholarship risen for students that are coming up. I know that you've been an inspiration for many law school students. The reason why I know that is because I was at the reception and they okay. said so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. That are coming through. Uh, you all have given scholarships. You all have done mentorships. You're very involved in the community as it is even today. Yes. How do you find the time for one? Well, you know, you make the time and you find the times to do the things that you want to do. And I believe that it is so important that you lift while you climb. Mm. And children and young adults, they need help. They need to be able to see that they can achieve their goals even when there are obstacles that they may have to overcome. So one of the other uh, 
positions that I held with the Illinois Judicial Council was that of the scholarship chairman, and that was before I was the president. Oh, wow. And what we would do is we would accept applications, and we were looking specifically for, but not totally, uh, for African-American students who had adversity in their life, if they had some type of struggle or obstacle that they had to overcome, as well as their ability to achieve and mm -hmm. to graduate. And we offered them cash scholarships to be able to apply it okay. not to just school, but sometimes they needed to be able to pay their rent. Law yes. school can be an expensive endeavor. Absolutely. Yes. So I was probably the scholarship chair for three years and one year as the co-chair, getting myself ready to move into the, the chairmanship. And I'm very happy with the scholarships that the Illinois Judicial Council was giving to law students all across the state of Illinois. And you are also a sorority sister. Yes, I am a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha. I knew that was going to come up. I was going to let that <laughs> plug go on in. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Well, thank you. And, and that's wonderful. And I know you all do a lot of work in the community as well. Um, I know that we are going to be wrapping up soon. So what I want to hear from you is why you think or why you wish to be appointed, to be voted into the appellate court uh, here on the first district in that hall vacancy? Well, as a judge of the circuit court, I affect the day-to-day -day lives of people one-on-one. -on -one. In my courtroom, I deal with families, so it's a family at a time. Mm -hmm. And while that is very important work, it is also important to be able to affect the lives of all Illinoisans, and I believe that my perspective, my experience, and my qualifications will allow me to give a more diverse, and I'm not just saying diverse as far as uh, ethnicity or anything like that. I'm talking about the practice of law. Mm -hmm. Because many times people mm -hmm. think only criminal law. But appellate court justices hear all types of cases. Mm -hmm. And domestic relations cases get appealed as well. Civil mm -hmm. cases get appealed as well. And so I have the diversity of practice as an attorney. And I bring my experience having sat in the domestic relations division as well. And so the decisions that that I will make as an appellate court justice have the ability to affect all Illinoisans. Mm -hmm. Because as we said before, the Illinois Supreme Court does not have to take the case. But the appellate course, yes. when, court, when they make the decision, then it can become case law or precedent for all circuit court judges to follow. And that could either remain just in the first district or it can spread throughout all of Illinois if a decision with that particular issue has not been heard by an appellate court in a different district. We are about to, to leave, but we're going to continue our conversation in part two, so you all don't go anywhere. Please tell them where they can learn more about you, Judge Ross, regarding your website, regarding your punch number, if you'd be so kind. Ross for Justice, and that's the number four, Ross for Justice.com, punch 152 for you. And I would be so honored and privileged if you would vote for me either on early voting on June 13th through the 27th or election day on June 28th, punch 152, Dominique C. Ross for the Illinois Appellate Court. Thank you so much for sharing all of your experiences with us. We are going to continue this conversation, so please stay tuned and learn more about these challenges that are coming up, not only for me, but for you and all of our communities. Thank you for tuning in to Can TV news you can use for your community.